Uh, so that's called Dodging Death. And we'll take a look here at some of the equipment. And I'm going to have uh, Benny demonstrate some of it to, some of it to you. Uh, the Cesta itself is really a, a, a marvelous uh, work of art. And it, they're all made by hand, of course, uh, Benny. And uh, let's take a look at it and, and explain some of it. Uh, first of all, it looks like about uh, two and a half feet long from uh, end to tip. Yeah, it's usually, this is a front court basket. It's smaller than the back court basket. It's 63 centimeters. Um, you know, it's made out of a, a rattan type wood. Of course, like you saw in Dodging Death, it's only made in, uh, in Spain and some parts of France. It's got a leather glove over here that uh, you slip all five fingers into. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, is your hand balled up like a fist or is there something to grab on? But actually, no, it fits in yeah, right it goes nice goes in pretty, flat. It goes in pretty flat. You see this, this part down here keeps your hand uh, strong. You hold on to the ball for a okay, second. Then it. we got what we would call here the cinta or the tie. We use this to uh, strap it to our wrist. Now there's just kind of a loop here that it goes through. Yeah, there's a little loop to keep the, uh, the, the, the cinta up high at the beginning. And as you see here, you go over the top and then under. The wrist has a little leather strap right here that you go under. And this is actually like a T-bar at the bottom that... that, that uh people that you yeah. need to wrap the seam yeah, around. It, people think that it's strapped on your hand, but it's more on your wrist. And you see you go over, you go under again twice, and then you kind of just fasten it or secure it. And then you see how it, it's strapped to your wrist, and it, it can't go anywhere. There's nowhere it can go. It can't come off, can't move. And uh, basically, that's pretty much it. The cesta is made out of this, uh, this rattan-type wood, so you have to keep it moist. So between the points, you'll see the player will get a rag or just on his hand and will wet the, uh, the frame of the cesta and keep everything uh, moist because if it dries out and the ball tends to hit it, it could crack and ruin the cesta. Now, now these uh, are costing in what range? About $275 to $300? Yeah, now, well, now it depends how the, how the peseta is in Spain. Now they're between $230 and, and $300. So when you buy cestas, how many do you buy at a time? I usually like to order two a month. Um, you know, sometimes if the, it's easier for the basket maker to send you three. Uh, obviously, that's that's pretty costly, it's up to nine hundred dollars a month uh, for certain players. But uh, it's always better to have extra ones than, than run out because a, a cesta that could break on the first day. And if it breaks on the first day, then you're 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 kind of you know, hunting around for another one similar. I can't go to somebody else's rack and take a cesta off. It's not like a bat or a, or a hockey stick or because, something. Because they're all slightly different? Yeah, the, the, you know, they're, they're uh, actually, they're very different because as you see here, this pocket has a, a certain depth. Uh, my depth may be different than somebody else's depth. Somebody might use less depth than me. Uh, somebody might use more of a curve than me. Somebody might use less. So there, you know, everybody uses a different style. It's just however you like to, man, you know, manipulate the basket and move it whether you need more or less uh, depth. Now, is it true you, you can ask what uh, specifications you want, but you don't always get it exactly the way you want it? Well, it's not made by a machine. It's made by uh, you know, a, a basket maker, a human error. He could make it with a little bit more pocket or a little bit less. They're always basically uh, similar. They're not the same. So that's where it comes into practicing where you would go out. You would throw a couple balls before the game, and you, know, you would know, well, this one's a little different than the one I'm using. Uh, you know, it, it, just because it's not good now doesn't mean it won't be good later because um, Maybe you'll, you'll change and you'll use one that is similar to that one in between one that's very different. You understand? So you, go, you try to use the, the most similar each time. Now there's a chestnut frame surrounding the edge, and this is really the key to the basket. When that cracks or breaks, for you, the basket is pretty much useless. Right. Well, as you see, the, the, the frame has a certain amount of flex, okay? And when you throw the ball, the, the cesta will flex outward, okay? Once the cesta cracks and anywhere in the frame, the cesta will, when you throw, will flex too much and then you lose all control of the basket. The velocity will still be the same, but when you go to throw a shot, it will not be exactly where you need it to be, and, and you're also putting someone else's life in danger. Now let's look at the ball and how it fits in with the Sesta. Uh, let's get a good shot of it here. There's really not a whole lot of margin for error here. You got uh, even the deepest part of the basket right here you have maybe maybe three quarters of an inch on each side? Right. Well, the people see the basket and they think, well, you have a pretty big spot to catch it in. It's not true because in order to stop the ball correctly, you have to catch the ball on the tip. The deepest you can catch it is maybe right here. Because what happens is, when you catch the ball, you cradle it to get it ready to throw. If the ball comes down in here, it's not going to be where it needs to be when you're ready to throw. Although you do hear guys catch it somewhat time in there and it just smacks in there. You know? Well, a lot of times you've got to catch it any way you can. <laughs> but the, the, the key to it is to have it as close to the tip. So when you see, if you can see here, if you can zoom out a little bit so you can see this, you want to have the ball right about here when you throw. 
okay? So when you catch the ball, you have to catch it on the tip and keep it there. So it's like a rocking motion. What happens to a lot of guys is they'll catch the ball and they'll catch it down in here. And Just then when you, around. Yeah, when you throw the ball, it's going to go downward. In other words, if you don't have it right on the precise point when you throw it, you're going to lose a lot of accuracy. We saw a shot, and I had it during the, uh, the highlights there, that Pedroso actually caught the ball, went to throw it, and the ball shot out to the, to the side. Right. What's happening in, in a shot like that? Well, that's, that's just called not stopping the ball. The, the key to it is stopping the ball. A lot of times the ball will move around, and it will be bouncing. And, and, and in highlight, you have three seconds to catch, stop, and throw. So, I mean, you really don't stop. It's just kind of catch, set it up, and throw. So, uh, when the ball is not in the right spot or it's bouncing around or it's, you know, the, the ball comes, people think that the, that the hard throws are hard to catch. Actually, the ones that are hard are easier to catch. The soft ones are the ones that will bounce out. They come slow and they, they just kind of pop out. That's when the ball's really, say, like a guy barely makes a save. Right. Uh, you're moving up and you got a lot of time. You also got time to look around and, and, and take your eye off the ball, basically. Right. Yeah, well, that's, we call that taking a picture. You don't take the picture until after you catch the ball. But uh, another thing that I want to mention is that, you know, people don't realize that, that the key to it is to, to make the ball stay in there. And we like to, to say, uh, pretend it's an egg. Because when I throw you an egg, you have to cradle it to right. stop it. If you just Give leave your it. hand out, it's, the egg's going to break in your hand. So I always say, when I teach kids to play, I say, don't break my egg. Don't break the egg. When I throw you the egg, don't break it. So the key is to cradle the ball. Cradle the ball. When you catch it, you got to cradle it. And then you hold it for a second, and then you can release it. And then you see the guys uh, with kind of a little shaking motion there. That's killing the spin on the ball, right? Well, that's, yeah, basically stopping the ball here. and getting it set up. Like when you catch the ball, you will catch it, and you would bring it right here to throw from here. You want the ball right about here when you get ready to throw. And the only way to do that is to, to, you know, to shake it. And it's not a thing where you think about it before the ball comes. You think of, you know, it's just a routine. It's like everything else. You do it so often that that's the way, you know, that's just the way you, you that's your style of play. A lot of people, like, like you see, some people hold the ball a little longer, you know, and they really get it where they want. Right. Is it illegal? If you, if you tend to go over that third second. If it's your style, they'll let it go. Right. Let's take a look at the ball a little bit closer. Uh, you zoom right in on that, uh, Caesar. Uh, looks very much like a baseball as far as the stitching, but the ball actually uh, can be lethal because the the the, the uh, stitches kind of stick up a little bit, and uh, with the ball spinning tremendously, it's almost like a a whirling. Uh, saw or something. Well, when you see, like you saw in Dodging Death, the ball is made by hand also. It's not like a baseball is made by a machine. Every ball is the same. Uh, these balls tend to uh, maybe have a lump here or there, or the, uh, the thread may not be, uh, you know, they, they, they press it. After they sew it, because this is two layers of goatskin, the bottom goatskin is always there. The top layer gets replaced after the ball's been thrown a lot. And uh, when they sew, you here you see that the stitches, they stick up a little bit. They put it in a press, and they press it down as much as they can. Um, obviously, it's not going to go all the way in, so you're always going to have a little bit of thread sticking up, which, you know, it could affect the bounce, it could affect the spin, it could just affect the whole ball the way it flies through the air. Now, this was one's marked with a P, and I guess that means that's a practice ball, Yeah, right? these are practice balls. We have uh, maybe one or two different type of balls. Every fronton has a different way of marking their balls. Uh, obviously, P means practice. Most of our balls would have a uh, dot on it with two little dots on it, which means it's a game ball. And uh, some of them are a big dot with just one dot, which means it's a game ball made by a different ball maker. I see. And uh, there's always different balls balls available in every point, I guess three balls in each point, yeah, in each a game, faster ball, right. and actually when the ball uh, goes off the wall several times, the core heats up, it becomes faster and more lively. Right, well what they do is they take one ball and they'll put it out in the practice, Some, you know, if there's not a, a fast ball for the, for the game, they'll throw out a, a, a game ball during the practice to warm it up, that will be the fast ball. Then they'll have a ball that was used maybe the day before that hasn't been on the court, which is used, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's cold. So you'll have the fast ball, you'll have the second ball, and then you'll have the new ball, which is just like this one, brand new, hasn't been out on the court, and it's a, it's a lot deader. It's, it, it takes a couple points for it to warm up. And right. usually when you play against a guy like maybe your stores or you know, a lot against me, a lot of times they take a new ball out because you take away from the player's game. You take away his strength. If you take a fast ball and he receives the serves and puts you in a bad position, it's very, very likely to win that point. So it's kind of different. You would think like when you have a brand new baseball or a softball, it's going to be nice and lively until it gets whacked around and soft. Right. But this, it's exactly the opposite in highlight because the more you use it, the hotter it gets, the quicker it gets. Right. Well, but you also got to think that after maybe one game or possibly two games, the ball.
wall has to be redone. It has to be taken out. It has to be restitched. And then after they restitch it, they sit in a closet for two days to dry and, and to get ready for a game again.